Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Victor again with my Ionic 5. Today's video is about how to get better efficiency and more range out of our Ionic 5s, our EV6s, and the GV60s. As you can see in my driver's display on my all-wheel drive limited, it recently showed a pretty staggering 367 miles of range at a full charge. I've done some searching as well as asking around on the different forums and it seems like owners are seeing anywhere from 200 to maybe 350 miles of range which is already a really wide gap between the lowest and the highest. But then you also have my 367 miles which is one of the highest that I've come across yet. Now range figures depend on so many different factors but I think there are a few key tips that can instantly give you a boost. You may not see 367 miles like I am, but you could easily see a large increase. So let's get right to it. I think there are three main tips. Number one, do not use iPedal exclusively. Number two, don't use level zero exclusively. Number three, drive slower. So number one, I did a whole video earlier about iPedal and how it affects the all-wheel drive models, but let's do a quick review here of the main takeaway. And that takeaway is that being in iPedal regen mode forces the all-wheel drive system to stay on. It doesn't matter what drive mode you're in. It doesn't matter if you're in Eco, Normal, Sport, or Snow, they will all be stuck in all-wheel drive if you are using iPedal regen. Now why does that matter? Well, if you have two motors, one front and one back, you're using more energy when you're powering both motors. So to be more efficient, you want to send power to only one motor and let the other motor disengage. And our all-wheel drive cars can do that situationally if you know how. And going back to the old video, when you are driving at speeds between 0 and roughly 15 miles per hour, the system defaults to all-wheel drive no matter what drive mode and no matter what regen mode you have selected. Once you reach speeds above 15 miles per hour, then it does depend on the drive mode and the regen mode and your throttle application. Now that 15 miles per hour switchover number is not an exact number. It really depends on the driving conditions and sometimes it will happen as low as 9 to 10 miles per hour. Other times it could be 20 miles per hour like when you're going up a hill. And one aid here is the driver's display. You want to get to the energy driving force distribution page and you can track in real time where the power is being sent. Now, I recommend trying it out with all the different drive modes and region settings and see for yourself. 0 to 15 miles per hour uses both motors. Nothing you can do about that. But once you exceed 15 miles per hour, staying in iPedal regen forces the car to keep both motors engaged and that means you will send power to both motors when accelerating. Now this should not apply to the rear wheel drive models because the rear wheel drive models don't have a front motor. So again, tip number one is to use iPedal situationally. At lower speeds it won't make much of a difference, but if you're using iPedal on the highway or at higher speed driving, that's really going to hurt your efficiency. Number two, don't use level zero exclusively and now this applies to both the all-wheel drive and the rear-wheel drive models. Level zero regen essentially means no regen, no energy recuperation. It forces the Ionic 5 to bypass the regen system completely. That means anytime you brake while in level zero regen, you're only using the friction brakes. Just like a traditional car that doesn't have regen braking. So there's two things happening here. Number one, you're using the friction brakes, meaning your brake pads and rotors. And number two, you're not letting the regen system recuperate any energy. Recuperating energy is a huge factor in getting better efficiency. Think about how often you brake while driving, or think about how often you're going downhill while driving. I personally drive in a congested city, so it almost feels like I'm braking more often than I'm accelerating. Now if you live outside of major cities and mostly drive on uncongested highways, well even then I'm sure you have opportunities to recuperate energy through braking. It could just be taking those off ramps or approaching those yield signs or as you get closer to home, those neighborhood stoplights and stop signs or even pulling into your driveway. 
Those are all opportunities to recuperate energy through your regen braking system, and every little bit helps. So do your best to take advantage of regen opportunities. Don't let it go to waste. So tip number two is to use regen braking whenever you need to slow down. Even if it's just to slow down a few miles per hour or just for one stop sign, every little bit of regen counts. The third tip is to drive slower, and that applies to all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive models. This is well documented. There are a ton of range test videos out there showing how speed affects range greatly. My personal rule of thumb to make sure that I get decent range is to stay near the speed limit. That's easy to do when I'm in the city driving on congested streets and congested highways, or I'm stuck well below the speed limit anyways because of traffic. But on open highways with no traffic, if you stay near the speed limit, or at most 5 to 10 miles per hour over the speed limit, you should still beat the EPA rating for your car. If you routinely drive 80 or 85 miles per hour, you're going to struggle to get even the EPA rated range figures. So those three things are the major tips to increasing your range and efficiency. Driving conditions like traffic and weather clearly play a huge role in range, so these amazing range numbers are only going to happen in warm weather conditions and for people with driving conditions similar to mine. However, there are still a few other range-saving tips. For example, if you have the heater or the air conditioning on and you're the only one in the car, well, you might want to try the driver-only setting, which will essentially only send air to the vents near you. And then there's also the ventilated seats or the seat heaters, which again will aid with cooling you down or keeping you warm, but they don't spend that much energy. Next, if you have the HVAC system running, you might have it on auto, auto one or auto two or even auto three. Well, if you toggle the fan speed manually, less or lower fan speed results in less or lower usage. Now, there are a few questions that I've come across. For example, can I see over 300 miles of range with mostly highway driving? Well, if you drive mostly on the highways, you probably will not see the numbers that I'm seeing if you have the all-wheel drive, but you could still get close to about 300 miles of range. But that's only going to happen if you keep your speed down and take advantage of coasting and taking advantage of regen opportunities when appropriate. But if you do most of your driving at lower speeds, like in the city or around town or back roads, where you drive mostly around 30 or 45 miles per hour, you really should be able to see well over 300 miles of estimated range, even with an all-wheel drive model, if you follow those tips above and keep your speed in check. So how else do I drive then if I'm not using iPedal or Level Zero exclusively? What does my driving actually look like? Well, I use the regen systems different levels at different times. Logically speaking, we want to accelerate as little as possible and recuperate energy through the regen system as often as possible. And that's what I'm doing in this clip. I'm maximizing regen, minimizing the amount of accelerator pedal usage, because in this case, I don't need it. But that means sometimes you want to be in level zero so you can coast, and other times you want to be in iPedal so you can call up max regen braking so that you don't have to use your friction brakes. So practice is key. Learn how to use the different regen levels when appropriate. Now, what if I don't want to toggle through regen levels manually myself? What if I prefer to set it and forget it? Well, in this case, I would say use auto regen, which will help decide for you when to use what level of regen braking. I don't want to go too much into auto regen because that's a whole other topic that's really complicated and I will be putting out a video for that one. But the general statement would be that if you don't like to manually switch between regen levels and want to just pick a level leave it there and forget it, I would honestly recommend the auto regen mode. The flip side is you need to understand how auto regen works, which like I said before, can be very complicated or very confusing if you don't understand the system's parameters. So like I said, if that's the case, you may want to just use level one or level two or level three exclusively as they still work great. Personally for me, if I'm using auto regen, I'm using it in the lowest setting via the paddles and that's been excellent for me in moderate traffic conditions on the highway. 
The next question is how slow do I actually drive? Hopefully you can see in the footage, I'm not hypermiling, I'm not drafting behind trucks, I'm not really doing anything crazy. I'm not even driving below the speed limit. I want to get good efficiency, but not at the cost of getting rock chips or debris flung at me by semi trucks and construction vehicles. So I typically only use the right lane when I feel comfortable doing so. Otherwise, I'm often in the middle lane or even in the inner lane, typically where I keep up with the flow of traffic until I'm reaching speeds about 5 to 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. At that point, then I'll switch into the slower lanes, and I think my specific use case just generally allows me to drive pretty normally while still getting excellent efficiency. I still have fun with the on-ramps for highways and occasionally when taking off but in light. general, I'm driving in moderate traffic or driving block to block on city streets. So I'm not able to go very fast even if I wanted to. And lastly, are there any other tips? Well, I've got a couple of videos that I've already done that go into some of these things in more specific detail. There's one that helps you understand the terminology and how to understand some of the graphs and data the car provides. There's another one all about iPedal and how and when it affects our all-wheel drive system running both motors. There's also a two-part series where I show my personal preferred braking method using the paddles. This allows me to brake without using my feet at all. And then like I said, I've got one dedicated just to auto regen that is in the works. So clearly there are a bunch of different things to try out. Any one of these things or even a combination of these things could be holding you back a little bit in terms of range and efficiency. Like I said before, every little bit helps and it all adds up. So a few quick notes before wrapping up, you're going to be getting better range during the warmer months. During the colder months, I was seeing around 280, 290 miles of range, but since the weather has gotten warmer, I'm consistently seeing between 320, 330, 340 miles of range. I don't know the full details of why, but the battery chemistry seems to favor warm weather when it comes to max range. Next, this was my first time charging to 100%. The manual states this should be done every once in a while, and honestly, this is my first time doing it since buying the car in February. So that's it. I'd love to hear what you guys are seeing in terms of estimated range and efficiency numbers. I'm sure there are some rear wheel drive owners out there that are probably breaking 400 miles of estimated range. Maybe there's an all wheel drive with the 19 inch wheels getting close to 400 miles. Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.